Now, it was it was something I asked the last group, and I want to ask you as well. Uh, exercise at work. It's kind of when when we don't when we're not exercising because that's you know we're not able to find time uh, after work. What are the little things you can do at work to get your brain working, as you were saying? What are the little desk exercises that you might have underneath you? Yeah, I mean, the thing that I do is um, I try and take the stairs. I work on the 10th floor. So at least once a day, I take the stairs, and I am huffing and puffing. And if I, if I do it more regularly, because, of course, there are weeks that I can't do it, uh, I, I can immediately tell the difference. So I'm, just, yeah. just little things just like little that. Just little things like that, yeah. What, what about you, Alan? What do you, do, what do you do to keep yourself active? I know you're a runner, and I know your, your daughters are swimmers yeah. and rowers, etc. Yeah, well, I think, well, it, it forms a really important part of my life. So, um, so yeah, I, I, outside of work, I, I was thinking about this before. So, activity is a really important part of what I do. I do lots of, of running, as you say, but but not very well, that's the key. So, 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 and it's very slow, and that's, that's fine. You're still beating and, and some of your daughters well, out. Well, I, I am. Know this. I know this. But, but so, if you, and this is why Wendy Guernsey is so, so wonderful. Like tomorrow, we've got a park run in the morning, yeah. we've got our, our cross country in the afternoon, mm. um, and, and that's our club cross country. And the, what, one of the things I want to get across is, again, you don't have to be very good. They make as much a fuss about me as they do about Lee Merrion who will be there. The next day, in fact, I'm doing a long run in the morning because we're going off to do a marathon. But then in the, in the afternoon, there's a fantastic triathlon event going on. We got, we actually can sit and watch GFC so <laughs> in, in, on a Saturday, on the Saturday yeah. as well. So actually all the opportunities are there for, for people to really embrace activity. And, but I think the key to it, and I'm sure Wendy agrees, uh, and it came across in your talk, Wendy, mm -hmm. it's all about small incremental changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people don't have to be brilliant at endurance so walking up the stairs are key we do this thing where we reboot every now and then so you just go for a, a bit of a walk yeah and it walk. and that and that has all the neural part you know it, it was does. wonderful hearing what wendy was saying it's that's what rejuvenates you helps yeah. you think so you don't have to go out and do huge amounts that just the one thing i would say because i work a lot with young people mm. the key for me about activities if we can change their patterns of going to and from school if you can get mm. that embedded then you're, you're halfway there to making the population more active. You've led me on to something I did want to ask. Now, I'm taking me as a small personal example. When, it, when I used to love sport. I loved sport until I was about 13. Then I went off it between 13 and 17 when I thought drinking and going out and all that kind of thing was much more interesting. And now my vice in life is playing football. It's, it's, my, it's my way of relaxing, almost. Uh, and, and I wonder, you know, there's, there's a lot of people, I believe, I believe, especially over here, who, you know, do fall out of love with activity yeah. and sport. And, and I think that's a real shame. Yeah. How can we stop that? How can we stop that? I, th I, think, um, I think there are lots of ways of doing that. I think, I think actually we're at a tipping point about making people understand, and it's partly through people like Wendy explaining the, the, the importance of, of activity. I think we're at a tipping point of making people want to become more active. So what you then do, if, if you get to that tipping point and you get people want to do it, you just embed it into everything they do. And it, the, the key for me is about both informal and formal activity. Okay. So young people in particular will associate activity with sport and PE, and that's not everyone's bag. So actually, it is, you know, doing the, doing the vacuuming. Yeah, or, power vacuum. You know, the, the, the beauty <laughs> of the island is, is on our doorstep. You, you've got every opportunity to be active. So you... You do incremental steps, you make it a, attractive, you just make it a normal part of people's lives. And we've got lots of things to learn about that at school. So things like school uniforms, you know, in the Daily Mile, they do it in there, they run a kit. Yeah. You, know, you, you don't make it a huge, you just make it part of every, everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. I, th yeah. I thought that was really interesting with the Daily Mile, actually. It being in that the school was uniform so inspiring. was the I fact... I love that topic. Exactly, yeah. it, was, it was the fact that in the school uniform, you've not got that time of getting changed, mm -hmm. you've not got any of the fuss, and it's just so, and everybody's the same, everybody's mm -hmm. normal, no, exactly, and nobody's thinking about body consciousness, just thinking, I'm going to run, I'm going to flap my arms around, you yeah. know, run like Phoebe from Friends, if right. you yeah. remember that, no, no, no. <laughs> it's about, I remember like, it. Yeah, yeah, you remember that, and, and I thought that was fascinating, I mean, the, the Daily Mart, is, is, so it's something that's starting over here, Alan. Yeah, yeah, we've got a couple of schools, I mean, it's interesting, just today, we've had, um, the, the Huguet have their, their head teachers here and Richard's keen to, to get it to happen. Fantastic. We, we've, we've arranged to see um, 
Elaine tomorrow, some of our, our head teachers. So Herm oh, School, wow. who aren't here today, I mean, they're ideal for doing That's it, the so. perfect yeah. place to do yeah. Go down so. onto the common, just watch out for those rabbit holes. Yes. <laughs> my, my word, yeah. I mean, that you, they, yeah. they, you can really catch a phone okay. and really okay. do yourself a mischief. Yeah. So, so Wendy, what, what, you've just seen the, the last bit of the presentations about food. Yes. How important is, um, I suppose, you know, would you say is your diet towards this positive exercising atmosphere that you want to create? Oh, absolutely. If you have a poor diet and you have too many sweets and, and fats, you simply cannot use your body and work your body in the same way. So it's a critical uh, element to it. Um, everybody, I think, that has been on the stage uh, worries about too much overload. If we say, okay, you're gonna have to change your food, you're gonna have yeah. to change your exercise, you're gonna have to change how you sleep, people are gonna say, forget it. Too that much. is just yeah. too hard. So people choose what they're most passionate about. I'm most passionate about exercise. Other people are more passionate about getting you know, green food and, and great food on the table. Um, uh, but it's, it's a holistic thing, so absolutely critical. And that's it. I mean, uh, you, you've said it there, a holistic view on mental health. I think yeah. one of the things today is about mental health isn't just, isn't just about how you stressed you are at work. It's about your entire life. It's about right. yeah, when you wake up, what you go home yeah. to. Uh, how, I suppose, you know, how, how are you getting that message across to people, Wendy? Because this is something you're, you're really passionate about. Yeah, I mean, I try and give people as many different ways to think about exercise, ways that they might e not even think about. And so I love the idea of, of, of a, a holistic approach to mental health. And one thing that we haven't talked about yet today, somebody may bring it up, is the power of music. So I had a live drummer. There's yeah, a reason yeah, why yeah. I asked uh, um, Greg to find me a live drummer because it's so emotionally evocative. You can't help. I got you to stand yeah, up, yeah, probably absolutely. partly because I had this live drummer here. So can we take advantage of your song? You, everybody has a song that they hear on the radio and they can't help but dance a little bit. I tell people, if you can't find time or space to work out, you don't want to join a gym, find your favorite song and dance in your, in your living room, like yeah. nobody's watching. Um, have a pillow fight with whoever <laughs> is in the room. Do a hula hoop, do, do silly things. There's so many things that you can do every day. They're fun, make it fun. Just to get your heart rate going. Yes, you know? it and that, does. Mm -hmm. And that is, and, and I mean, as you said, that is the, the vital bit of it. Even the tiniest incremental rise, yes. getting that, and it gets your hippocampus. Hippa Hippa hippocampus, yes. Hippocampus, yes. It, gets, it gets them working. Yes. And I mean, actually, there's an assembly I went to in Guernsey where they did the wake up song. Oh, the, the wake, yeah. Tell yeah. me about the wake, wake up, up song. Wake up, shake up. Wake well, up, it, shake it, up. It's, yeah. it's interesting that they've done that at the, at the Marl, in, and, mm. um, at the Marl Primary School. And, um, and they do it at other schools as well. And it, it does everything that Wendy has identified. So they'll go into the Mar Primary, and, they'll, and instead of waiting around outside in, a, mm. in there, in, they'll, they'll go into the hall, and they do that, and it galvanises them. And then it, the, the beauty for the school is it gets them absolutely ready for some, for some hard learning. So they'll go straight yeah. into literacy and numeracy. So wake up, shake up, that kind of... It, the, the, what we're looking at with our schools to make our mo schools more active, it, there's quite a debate about it. Do we put on more PE and things? And I think what we'll be looking at doing is more and more 10 to 20 minute bursts. Instead of, of an hour long PE, yeah. se PE yeah. session, yeah. actually a wake up, shake the, up, uh, as Wendy did. The issue you get with hour long PE sessions, and I, I think our schools work really hard at making them inclusive and interesting. Mm. But actually, you can hide in them quite a lot. You can do mm. a lot, you can do a lot of inactivity mm -hmm. on a football pitch because you can stay on left back. You can watch me, mate, then, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do, yeah, that kind of thing, it's non-threatening, it's a bit of fun, mm. it's, not, it's not measured. And I think, and you just get people into that habit of, well, we, we call it rebooting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So. I th as you said, those little bursts, and I think yeah. Alan hit on a point, which I want to raise with you, Wendy, mm. about people perhaps being a bit reticent to get involved in these things. A bit, yeah. a bit, you know, they want to stand back because actually exercise, it's never been their thing, it's never mm. going to be their thing. But actually, as you say, if you want to improve mental health, this is a, this is a direct route to it. How would you say getting people to come out of their shell or, or stay in their shell, but to go out and do this yeah, exercise. Yeah, I always try and encourage people to start with what do you really enjoy doing? It could be talking with friends, go for a walk with your friend. It could be, I just want to get away, I need to get away, go for a walk alone. It starts with a walk, these short mm. bursts of things, and then what I hope will happen is they will go for this walk, um, they'll notice, hey, that was pretty easy, I feel good, and that will naturally start Progress. to build up. 
But one of the other things I want to br bring up is um, your Wake Up Shake Up program <laughs> reminds me of my Can Exercise Change the Brain class, where I actually had the students exercise for a whole hour, mm. and then I taught them an hour and a half actual lesson. And I thought I was going to be just so tired by the end. I was, I was going to be Two and a half yeah. hours of neuroscience. Two and a half <laughs> hours. First exercise in neuroscience. I was so energized by the end. I had to teach the class and then teach, teach the exercise class and to teach the academic class. And I'll tell you, that changed, that completely changed the atmosphere in my classroom. Um, I'm a good teacher, but I did a, I, you know, I did a traditional kind of lecture from the, from the lectern. And um, it was engaging. But when I had them exercise, um, and the, I still remember that first day, they were scared. That first day I'd that I walked an in. An hour of exercise and an hour yeah. and a half. I'm, I'm <laughs> it, they got so engaged. I mean, imagine doing that for an hour before every um, college class that you ever went to. They were more interactive. They were more creative. Um, it changed. You know, when you sweat with your students, it's a completely <laughs> different interaction, especially with your university. You professor. get more of a buy-in, I suppose, I, from your absolutely, students. Absolutely, absolutely. So it was a game changer for me as a teacher, and and for the way that I teach, but also uh, seeing a new way for the students to learn. Alan, do we have any? I mean, except for Wake Up Shake, are there any more examples of this kind of active learning? Oh that yeah, you've got I, over think, here? I think it's it's understood that. The, the best way of getting... You, what you want to do is you want to turn people's lives into virtuous circles rather than vicious circles. Mm. The vicious circles is where they're leading very sedentary lives, they're not eating particularly healthily, they don't feel good about themselves, they do less exercise. What we try and do in schools is turn it around. So, you know, people, people do... If, if, you can, if you can do the kind of activity that Wendy says, and we, there's a lot of that going on, certainly in our primary schools. We, mm. The issue we... So in our primary schools, yeah. I'm quite, I think I could take... Wendy, anybody into any of our schools mm -hmm. and you see lots of activity, you see lots of outdoor learning. Great. Um, and, and, it's, and, and what we try and do is we try and make sure that that then continues outside school. So we work a lot so that they'll join clubs and organisations as well. Mm. High schools, it's more difficult for that. This is for our, our 12 to 18 I think you've got more people yeah. who and are at that point, they're like, oh, actually, no, well, yeah. I think, socially. I think yeah. No, I think it's partly that. I think the other thing, and I think this is where the community has to respond, is we expect people, you know, we, 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 we have a bottom line now with our, with our new curriculum that goes way beyond just being successful at exams. Schools are on a lot of pressure to, to achieve academically. Yeah. That means that you know you do lose time doing this kind of thing. So I think that 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 has to change partly because we need to change the perceptions and the expectations of our community about what we do in our high schools. Yeah. Um, and as I say, I, I'm so impressed when when I do go to the high schools. There's a lot of reluctant, active people there, and I think I think as our, our PE staff in particular really try and embrace that by being inclusive making things more fun. You've got Zumba, you've got yeah. cheerleading, that things kind of that are, Things that are a bit out of the sport. box, because I think yeah. Zumba's kind of erupted in the last six years. I mean, mm -hmm. at, at university for me, I wasn't particularly active before then. I'd ripped all the ligaments in my knee playing football, oh. and I thought, what am I going to do? And me and my best friend, he'd broken his neck playing rugby, so we were both a bit not particularly ready for full contact sport. And we started playing <laughs> Ultimate Frisbee. Yeah, and uh, we ended up, um, I mean, Jock in the, in the audience here, part uh -huh. of the Dandelion Project, he started an Ultimate Frisbee group over here. Uh -huh. And it's, it's a sport, I mean, from America, I'm sure you're probably well aware yes, of it. I, I know it's it. all based around kind of spirit and all about um, making sure everybody's having a good time. There's uh -huh. the competitive element as well, yeah. which I liked. And, it, and, it, and it's, it, it was something that was a bit different and it got, brought a load of people together. And we did a lot of exercise at uni, which is not a particular time when you're known for doing exercise. Mm. It's more, again, drinking and going out. Yeah. So I suppose, is, have you got those kind of niche sports that people yeah, can be involved I th with I over think, here? You know, that, I think what Guernsey is really good at, I think it, one of its strengths, and you can see it in the Island Games, when I, was, when I was at school, you played a bit of football, a bit of cricket, a bit of athletics, a bit of rugby. And if you were good That's at it, it, you'd play loads of it. If you weren't, you wouldn't. Here... And the Island Games is key to this. We have 15 sports that, mm. that we, we, we get represented. So you've already got a breadth of sports. And then beyond that, you know, you just look at, you know, we've, we've got a small island. We've, we've knocked up an ultimate frisbee. Stuff. We've got all this. There's so much activity around the sea that's going on. Yeah, with swimming yeah. and whatever. And we, you know, that relates to the presentation we saw today. So for me, I think that the issue that we face is, I, I, I think generally I'm confident about 70% of young people that they're, they're taking up the opportunities to be, be active. And there's probably about 20% that we really need to make sure that they, 
the opportunities are there for them because of the opportunities that the Youth Commission, Sports Commission just and just organisations offer. And it's just how we, we walk alongside them and mentor them into, into doing that. But for, for an island, the opportunities we offer is, is really quite special. Yeah. Wendy, I mean, I, there's 20% we're talking about. Mm -hmm. They're young people. How would you say you can go about convincing young people that exercise is a benefit for them? Yeah, I mean, I think um, seeing mentors, seeing people they look up to, okay. doing role this, models. role models. Um, are your parents, are your teachers doing this, or are they just sitting there saying, yeah, go, go, go and do that, it's good for you. Um, and I, I keep coming back to the w reason I got into exercise. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And sometimes you just have to look for fun things, and maybe this is where the parents can come in and help them, kind of guide them to look for different things. And if the first thing they say, oh, I hate it, fine, listen to them, they hate it. There's Move so many other else, things yeah. that you can try. And especially on this island, just walking around <laughs> is so beautiful. And I'm sure you have beautiful um, um, activities you can do on the sea. I mean, Channel Islands, this is this is a, a dream area to be able to do <laughs> well, stuff like that. Well, there's nothing better than a cliff walk. I mean, how long are you over here for, Wendy? I leave on Sunday. Leave on Sunday, there's a cliff walk in that on okay, Saturday. You okay. go down to e -car, look along that. I mean, do, do you do you take the students out and kind of, you know, take, take they're not just in their playing yeah. fields. They're, you know, there's nothing more exciting well, for me than when I went, you know, went to another yeah. school swimming pool or yeah. something like that. Now, the, the, the opportunity, the way we use outdoor learning now, within the school, but also outside the school, is is fantastic. Again, now, there's a we've forest got, school that's just opened at the College of FE, I believe. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, we, so we use the forest school yeah. philosophy throughout. But I, again, Richard's here from the Hoogate. I remember going down with them and them doing sea swimming at Liu. Mm. Absolutely brilliant. And they'll really? Re they'll remember that. They won't remember that. My word, the health and safety yeah. involved well, in the, that must have been an absolute it was, nightmare. It, yeah, <laughs> it was. And, and, and that is an issue. But yeah. you, you know, you've got to manage risk. But they'll remember that. You know, you talk to this. Yeah. It's a bit like um, the, the, the Sue Palmer's, uh, Elaine mentioned what Sue Palmer, remembering what you do. You don't remember the classroom activities as much as Right. When you're the outside. Time you and, out, when and you've I gone out and done So we're now beginning to really build on that and um, make sure that young people get that experience and opportunity. Yeah. Okay, I want to finish up. We've got about two minutes. Oh, we got, okay, clock's changed. We've got, oh, we've got a bit more. We've, got a bit more. we've just been minutes. given a bit more time. Uh, Wendy, as a, the, the, what would you like people to go away from here thinking about? I know that's an absolutely broad as anything question. And yeah. I, I forgive me for asking it now. <laughs> What would you like people to come away from here thinking? People on the live stream who are watching now. I want people to come away thinking about what they can do in their lives easily to bring more activity and more nutrition. Uh, all of the things, all of the themes that we've been talking about, these are life changing, but little things that you can do can make a huge difference. And so, Everybody has things that they can, they can add, small things. And if everybody in this audience did one of those things, uh, then, then I've, I've done my more than three people connection. <laughs> Uh, Wendy, I just I wish I had your smile as well. You you, you, you light up the room with your smile. I wish I was. Uh, how do you keep smiling? I mean, that, that, I I I'm amazed. Do I, I love being. Do I light up the room with my smile, John? Is that you? <laughs> Is that the? Alan, on. I've known you for long enough that <laughs> I could say anything and it'll bounce straight <laughs> off you. Know. Alan, what would you like people to come away from here with? I think it's linked to, to what Wendy said, but I think actually what I'd really like is the young, talking about young people and how they look at their lives holistically, they're really influenced by, by parents, by peers, and, and I think it's, it's worth us thinking about, you know, everything we do is reflected in what they do. So, and that is around food and it is yes. around lifestyle and it is, it is around the incremental change of perhaps not taking the car into town because it's easier. Yeah. Or even if you do take the car, you park it at the back of North Beach and you walk that 200 yards <laughs> That's because it's a 10 hour again. space, is that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, you know, do you know what? I, I completely get my, my. I worked at the BBC and my role model in that office was a guy called Simon Fairclough. Yeah. He cycled to work every day. Yeah. He lived out at Le Gouf. Yeah. There could not be a further place away. It's a beautiful yeah. area, by the way. You should go yeah. there. Yeah. It's, it's the furthest bit away. It's a half hour cycle yeah. every day and then about 40 minutes back. And, uh, and I started cycling and I came into work. I was full of beans. 
I was I felt fitter and also when I you know when I at the weekend when I'm thinking oh you know have I done an exercise this week yeah 10 yeah, times exactly. this week I've yeah. cycled to yeah. and from yeah. work I mean and when you see somebody do that like you say mm-hmm. a, role model, a role model it does make a huge difference um, I mean sporting role models you know you, you mentioned the, the Lee Merrion etc yeah. we don't all have to be Lee Merrion we can be Simon Fairclough at the yeah. BBC yeah. and it all still yeah. uh, inspire you well yeah. thank you very much guys I, I really you. appreciate uh this and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of Thrive and I hope everybody watching and the people who stayed around did enjoy that too. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank Wendy you. Suzuki Thank you. and Alan Williams. Thank you. Thank you.